Great. So what we're going to talk about is the first founding culture of young brands. And they call in the article they call this starting with shared values. So what they did, okay, I think it's a little hokey the comparison about they make a comparison say that you know much like the US wanted to separate from Britain and they created a declaration of independence to establish a separate set of values. I think that comparison, uh, I don't like it. Um, because again, there's a huge difference between people splitting like in the American Revolution and PepsiCo spinning off young brands to satisfy shareholders. I mean, restaurants versus politics, I, I don't know. It's, it's it, that, that comparison is not doing it for me. But what is important <coughs> is the fact that you understand that young brands said, what we're going to do, we're going to be so different from Pepsi. It's not going to be all about this home office glorification, but instead, the restaurant general manager is the number one person in this company. This company, my friends, is all about you, the restaurant managers, and all of us up here in Yum, we're not like Pepsi where you work for us, but rather we are here to service you. It's all about you. That was the first step that they took. All about the restaurant owners. You people have been here forever. You people are doing a great job. We want you to get the credit. We want you to be awesome, and we're going to help you do that. That was the first step. Okay. The second thing that they wind up doing is they have a kind of a founding team building activity, right? They bring uh, 200 different restaurant managers over to Miami. They have some team building exercises and just the simple fact of sharing biographies because a lot of these restaurant managers were like in direct proximity to each other, KFC, Yum and Pizza, but they didn't even know each other. But having these team building exercises said, hey, you know what? We are not KFC, Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. We are Yum Brands. We are different flavors of the same kind of ice cream. Okay, so that will actually start helping generate a shared culture that everybody was part of the same team. Then they also initiate some titles, and these titles are interesting. So corporate headquarters was renamed to Restaurant Support Center. We are all about you. Okay, they also um, renamed the presidents of. KFC, Taco Bell, and Pizza to chief concept officers, right? And just indicating that there were three concepts, not three companies, i.e. Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, and KFC are concepts, not restaurant companies. They also changed the name of managers. They weren't managers, but they became coaches. The people above managers were area coaches. The people above them were market coaches. And the people above them were head coaches. So they really start this whole thing about coaching. Um, and that's what I'm going to wind up talking to you um, about in this next, uh, next video. But what they wound up doing, before, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm getting a little excited here because this is important. And I, and I like how they said this. Under PepsiCo, the former COO, chief operating officer said, if you are a good performer, you get left alone. But if you're a poor performer, you get an action plan, i.e. coaching is about punishment. However, uh, under the Yum Brands, they said that coaching could be about the team and the person to be coached. It can't be about the personal success story of the coach. Um, Short-term fixes under Pepsi became dysfunctional for building long-term capabilities. Okay. Um, yeah. So basically what they're saying is that it was okay to get coaching. It was okay to get help because this was, it was about supporting you unlike at Pepsi where it was about punishing you if you needed coaching. Cool. So we're going to talk a little bit more about coaching because I think there's some interesting things to talk about in the next video. If you like this, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and comment. Cool. See you then.